Christy Hunter. I'm a horticulturist here at the Greater Des Moines Botanical Garden. And today we're in the Wells Fargo Rose Garden. I hope you can hear me. There's a little bit of traffic from the interstate, so I'm going to talk as loud as I possibly can. Um, today we're going to be doing some rose pruning. It's that time of year. Uh, I've been waiting for my roses to um, start pushing some buds, which they have, so I can definitely tell what's alive and what's not. And just some tips for pruning roses. Um, there's basically three three things I look for when I'm pruning a rose. Um, the first thing I look is for dead. Um, then I look for diseased canes. And then I, I look for things that are smaller than a, a pencil in width, really skinny growth. That's not really gonna do much for me. So um, those are the three basic things I'm looking for. Um, also cross branches, anything that's rubbing um, or going in towards the middle of the rows. So when you're looking at a rose, you want it to have kind of almost like a vase shape. So kind of... All right. So now that I got it uncovered, I'm gonna... A little bit louder. Yep. Now that I got it uncovered, I'm gonna get my pruners ready. I use Felco pruners. Um, bypass pruners are best. Um, don't use those anvil print pruners. Those are the ones that kind of just pinch it. That's gonna crush your um, your rose and that's not good. Um, for each rose when I'm pruning, I use um, just a little alcohol. As you can see, you don't want to cut straight across because when you cut straight across, water can just sit on there. You don't want that. So we always cut at an angle. So you want an angle kind of like that. So I'm just going to keep going through here and finding dead. That's all I'm really doing. De dead, dead caning is a, another term that we use when we're talking about pruning roses. And once I get all the dead off, I'm gonna kind of look at my rows and look at the buds to see which, which buds I wanna cut. I'm gonna choose this guy right here. He's the, one of the first ones that broke, but if he, if he starts to grow, he's gonna grow in. So that's not really gonna help my uh, vase shape. I want this guy, cause he's gonna grow this way. So I'm just gonna come down here and cut right above that bud right there. Okay. Right here. It's got a, a bunch of different ones on here, but that's kind of thin growth, so I may actually go down a little bit further on my branch to get a bigger, thicker bud to break. I'm going to think about that. And that's okay. You can always come back to it if you want. This one's pretty obvious. I'm going to come and do this one right there because that bud's going to break this one. Because they do have, get some winter dieback, and we don't we don't want to take the rose down too much. Um, if you have landscape roses, um, things like drift roses and easy elegance or oh so easy roses, you can you can be a little bit harsher on your pruning of those because they're kind of like shrubs, like a spirea. They'll be fine. Um, one rose that I don't normally touch right now in this time would be my climber. So this one right here is a climbing rose. I'm just gonna leave him alone and let him do it blooming before I actually do a lot of pruning. Look at him and if he has some dead on him, put that out, but that's all I do. Um, and that's about it. It's really not that hard. Anybody can do it. If you have any questions, feel free to um, email us here at the Botanical Garden. Um, my email address is lhunter 
at dmbotanicalgarden.com. We'd love to hear from you.